We're here in the Tech Accelerate studio here at London Tech Week 2018. Joining me on the sofa is Chao Ho Chan, who is essentially government CIO for Singapore. Um, now, I, I want to know more about your role and in, in particular, um, GovTech. Tell me more about this. Right, yeah, you know, I essentially have two roles. Uh, I'm the government CIO in charge of technology for the public sector. But at the same time, I also run very much the implementation team at the GovTech. Now, GovTech is a kind of a pretty interesting agency because what it does is that besides the planning and the policy work, etc., it also does the actual implementation. In fact, we have about 2,000 people in GovTech. Uh, doing everything from uh, census IoT to digital transformation to data, data analytics and AI uh, to cybersecurity. So we're talking about a very mixed group of technologists mm. who are actually putting in place uh, the digitalization of Singapore. Now many cities around the world can uh, try and stake a claim to being a smart city. In your view, where does, where, where does Singapore stand as a, as a smart city or indeed a, a, a smart nation, I guess? Yeah, S Singapore is unique in the sense that we are both a city and a nation. While most smart cities deal with very much what we call municipal issues, um, Singapore has to go beyond that. You know, besides municipal issues, we look at national issues. And the ability to implement a smart nation involves two very important things. One is the concept of digitalization. How do we digitalize the government? And how does the government digitally connect to the rest of the private sector? So that's a very big part that's going on. The second part is that, you know, we need to, we are, we are, we are rolling out sensors and IoT, like there's no tomorrow, right? Yeah. There are hundreds and thousands of, of sensors going on right now. So what we have done, um, which I think is quite unique, is that we are trying to connect the entire country together with a platform that enables us to share data in a very easy way. Now, it's easy to do POCs, but it's hard to scale. And I, do, yeah. I don't think many smart cities have scaled that well because scaling is not just about implementing like 50 lampposts, it's really about a nationwide implementation that allows us to manage the country and the city much better. I'm sure, you know, we're talking about IoT here, I'm sure there's a lot of experimentation, you know, you're dealing very often with cutting edge technologies and stuff that's never been done before. When you're managing those projects, how do you try and take them beyond the pilot stage? Because we see organizations uh, across the globe who embark on pilots, IoT pilots, and they never get beyond the pilot stage. What's your approach to bringing new IoT solutions and projects to life beyond the pilot? You know, one of the biggest challenges that many cities have is that, you know, if you are driven by technology alone, chances are that you'll never succeed. But on the other hand, if you're driven by real use cases, mm -hmm. then life changes because um, we engage the agencies as well as the private sector quite a fair bit to try to solve real problems. You know, technology never figure in the first couple of stages, if you ask me. Yep. So once we define the problem carefully, what, what essentially happens is that it takes life of its own because if you can use technology to solve that problem, that use case, um, people own it. People want it to go public. The people want it to scale in the entire country because it's important. Let, let me give you a very simple example. Recently, there was a lot of talk about drowning in public swimming pools. Right. There are not enough lifeguards around, right? You know, lifeguards operate for like six to eight hours and they go, they go home. So what we did was that we mounted cameras around swimming pools and we were able to detect when a drowning case occurred, for example. Now it's a real thing, right? Because you're saving lives. People might say, well, you don't save like, hundreds of lives a year, but if you save six to eight to ten lives a year, that's a lot, that's a lot of thing to do, right? Then all of a sudden you find that it becomes scalable because everybody realizes that's important. And it will take a, a, a life of its own, for example. So I think the use case is actually very important. The technology just enables the use case. Of course. And that should be the case throughout project life cycles exactly. when, when technology is the case. Uh, but I guess coming back to technology for a moment, obviously we're at a what's ostensibly a technology event here at Tech Accelerate this week and London Tech Week. Um, when it comes to IoT, do you see there being a, a technology or a movement or a trend that, that is the biggest kind of change maker, if you like, in the IoT space? What, what, the, what the big enabler is for more organizations, more cities and nations to embrace and get value out of IoT? Yeah, I, I think you know, people tend to get too focused on the IoT device itself. Mm -hmm. But to me, that is just a commercial device. What's more important is the data that it's able to capture. And once you capture the data, and we're talking about literally petabytes of data being captured yeah. every day. The next question is that how do you process the data? 
because if you can't process the data to solve a use case, then essentially you're just capturing data for the sake of capturing data. So I think the big, the biggest things that we are pushing quite a fair bit on is how do you process the data, how do you interpret the data, how do you make sense of the data, and very importantly is that what do you do with the data, the metadata that you process after that. Does it lead to better controls? Does it lead to better monitoring? Does it lead to our ability to uh, intervene in situations that is uh, time, time critical? Yeah. So that's really the, the thing that we are doing. And uh, processing the data is really the key thing, if you ask me. Goes back to the conversations we were having four or five years ago around right. big data and you know right. volume, variety, right. velocity. But right. at the end of the day, all of that's useless unless you're getting some value exactly. out of it. Exactly. Now you are one of TechCelerate's change makers here okay. this week. <laughs> uh, I just want to find out a bit about you and about your background and what inspired you to uh, to embrace digital, to help organisations and to help cities embrace digital. And any. Any key achievements, anything that from, from your own history you feel proudest of? Yeah, you know something, um, I, I spent 23 years in the private sector. I've never been in government before in my life, actually. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, I used to work at Barclays next door, right? So, <laughs> so, so I've been banking all my life. And um, when the opportunity came for me to lead the transformation, the digital transformation in government, mm -hmm. I took it because a big part of it is about, about public service, because I think Really good tech people need to join the government to really transform government. Yeah. You know, if you just stay by the wayside and criticize and not participate, nothing's going to happen. So when I came in about four years ago, um, uh, we, we changed the way technology was done in government quite a fair bit. Uh, in the past, we almost never built anything ourselves. Today, I got about nearly 400 people in the digital space, building mm. things, innovating, and, and keep trying out new things that will literally transform the way government is going to approach technology going forward. And at the end of the day, it's all about people, you know. How do you change the lives of people? How do you use technology for the good of people? You know, somebody was talking to me the other day about, you know, AI for the good, for the betterment of people and, and society. And I think these are important things. And uh, unless uh, people who are, who are technologists are willing to participate and give their time and effort, um, there won't be a major transformation in government. And government is important because government does lead the way in many of the changes in the country. And that's, that's the reason why I'm doing it. It's no surprise that many analysts and even some vendors don't talk about the Internet of Things, they talk about the Internet of People because right. at the end of the day, that's where the change that's really exactly. happens and, and matters. Right. And the thing is that at the end, you're measured by impact. If yeah. you don't drive, if you just implement technology for the sake of technology, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. But if it does impact people, if it saves a life, if it uh, makes the country a better place to live in, all of a sudden, I think you have made a difference. Now, before we go, Chaho, you are giving a keynote at the IoT uh, right. World Europe stage, talking about um, Singapore's smart city strategy. What can delegates expect from your presentation? Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm a practical guy. You know, uh, the, the thing about um, Many of these uh, conferences is that people talk a lot about concepts, but what I'm going to do is to talk a lot about uh, what we have done over the last couple of years and how that has really changed the way we run government in Singapore and, and how it's going to impact our citizens going forward. So it's going to be a practical presentation. It's, it's about our journey and it's about how we're going to make um, Singapore basically a better place for, for Singaporeans. Chao Ho Chan, government CIO in Singapore. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.